Hi there, Chris in the camp, Moto Legends. Here today to talk to you about a suit, a rather unique and special one-piece suit. Now clearly, at Moto Legends, we don't sell leather one-piece suits. We're not that kind of company. The suit we're going to talk about is a one-piece oversuit. It is called the Klim Hardanger, um, and it's designed to be worn over your work clothes or your casual clothes. One thing that I need to address first off, after my last Klim review, I was lambasted on social media for my inability to correctly pronounce the brand name. Apparently, it should be Klim and not Klim. I have to say, I disagree. I know they're Americans, but they'll come round sooner or later. As far as I'm concerned, if the name was meant to be Klim, they would have put an E on the end or a B, like Klim, like Slime, then the name would be Klim. Instead, what they did was take a name, Kim, and they put an L after the first consonant, therefore creating a word that is pronounced Klim. So, I'm glad we've got that over. Let's now talk about the Klim Hardanger. Now, no two ways about it, um, can't be hidden. The Klim Hardanger is a copy of a well-known suit, a long-standing suit, a very famous suit that's created in America in a town called Duluth. It is the Aerostitch one piece. <coughs> I've actually had an Aerostitch for many years. Um, I was actually in Minneapolis uh, for, for a meeting. I jumped in the car, went up to the factory in Duluth, got, got measured for the suit. It was the best way of doing it. Um, it is a fantastic bit of kit. The concept is very simple. Um, you step into it, you step into one leg, there's then a full length zip goes all the way from the neck down to the foot. You can be inside this suit in a matter of seconds. In America, it is a very popular way of touring. Um, over here, we see a lot of customers with aero stitches who have imported them into the UK. A lot of people like them for commuting in because obviously you can put your suit jacket, your trousers on, tie and, and shirt, um, put it on, ride into work, you arrive at work, you take it off, you put it in the pannier and you're good to go. So it's a very convenient way of riding. I've used mine for going to meetings. I used to use it a lot when I flew a fair amount. So I would go to the airport, take the suit off, put it in a pannier and just get on the plane. I also quite like touring in my Aero Stitch. Um, again, it goes on over your jeans, over, over your normal casual clothing. I would turn up in a village in France wanting some lunch, unzip it, put it in a pannier, then I can walk around town totally unencumbered by um, protectors and, and protective gear and, and so on. So the concept is a fantastic one. As I said, I got my suit about 30 years ago. It was not, it's certainly if one looks at the way motorcycle clothing has developed these days, it was not and certainly is not a very technical piece. Actually, it was meant to be a laminated outfit Mine was never particularly waterproof, had big vents under the arm, zips here, but the zips weren't waterproof. I personally lived with the fact that um, the trade-off was worthwhile, that it let a bit of water in, but the convenience it gave me, it felt uh, comfortable, I felt protected. Um, I thought it was an acceptable trade-off to have a little bit of water leakage. Um, so a fantastic suit, it has done me well, but I think what Klim eventually did was they realized that it was a little bit out of date so that it could be improved upon and so they've created the Klim Hardanger. It's a much more modern take, it's a much more technical garment. Um, so we're going to go on now and look at that in a little bit more detail. So here I am with Sean, shop manager here at the Hello. shop in Guildford. Um, I'm wearing my trusty 30 year old Aerostitch one piece. Uh, Sean's in the new Klim. The Klim is undoubtedly a more technical piece. It is made from a Gore-Tex three-layer performance shell. Not sure I fully understand that, in that I had always assumed that it was the Pro Shell that was three-layer, performance shell was two-layer, um, but this is technically, for some reason, a three-layer performance shell. It is state-of-the-art. It's done in a typical Klim way, in that there's not any kind of comfort lining inside. It's an outer shell, um, but it's done again with their amazing attention to detail. So one of the problems with a suit like this, you're wearing your clothes un underneath it. You don't always have great venting. The Klim comes with more vents than you can shake a stick at. 
um, all over. I mean, Sean, where are they? We've got 14 vents, so you've got them on the chest, on the arms, down on the legs. You've got exhaust panels on the legs as well. Sorry, I've just opened a pocket there. Um, and you've got them down the back here. I mean, something like this, even in the warm weather, you could be wearing shorts and a t-shirt underneath and just the air would be flowing through, but it will still keep you protected. I mean, 14 vents in my book sounds a little bit um, excessive. One of the problems with vents, obviously, is when it rains, they're a, a weak point for water ingress. But obviously, we've got the, the best quality at waterproof zips. We don't tend to find that anything from Klim leaks. But in truth, with 14 vents, if you did find occasionally that you got a leak, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise us and maybe it shouldn't be a reason to uh, reject the suit um, because of the benefits of those zips is going to be that in the summer you can get some great airflow through this, uh, this suit. Um, in terms of protection, the main fabric is a 500 a denier a Cordura. In all the impact zones, you've got 750 um, and that Cordura and down, that, down the legs. So in terms of protection, it's moved on quite away from, from the suit I've got. Um, D3O armour throughout the suit, it comes fully armoured in the back, the elbows, the shoulders, the knees, the hips. That's the biggest change with that. Yeah, yeah. This, this one doesn't even have a back, a back protector. So protection wise, I think also this is in, in a different league. I personally, one of the things that I like about this suit, and maybe it's just because I've owned it a long while, um, it just feels very comfortable. It has a lining, not a lot of thermal, but it just feels very comfortable to wear. Not sure everybody finds that with the hard angle. Just a bit stiffer, a bit crispier, but I think it's not uncomfortable by any means. It's just a slightly different feel. Yep. Um, I think they add volume to fit more people. Um, you've got the adjusters here to make it more comfortable. I find this really comfortable. I don't, right. I don't you know, slightly stiffer, but when you're on the bike, it's not the sort of thing you walk around in. The idea is with this, get off the bike, you, it's off in 30 yep. seconds. And I've, I've seen, seen some customers that get it on and they just, they just didn't feel comfortable. They found it too crunchy and crispy. But I think those people just weren't used to wearing laminate gear. Yep. Um, and I suppose it's just not gonna suit everybody, but it's the trade-off. If you want to be able to ride somewhere in your work clothes, in your casual clothes, be totally dry, be protected, then you know, something's gonna, gonna give. And if a little bit of what uh, gives is comfort, then so be it. Um, yeah. Sean, also just, just talk us through pockets galore. Um, I don't know whether yeah, they're up. Yeah, they're, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a Klein jacket with it without 100 pockets on it. Yeah. You've got pockets here. Um, they, they identify this pocket as uh, one where you use one of their special cards for, for the emergency services. I don't know yeah. if we particularly use them in the UK, but you can still order one of the cards and use it in here. Otherwise, you could use it for keys or any, anything else you want to put in there. You've got pockets in the chest, both sides. You've then got a pocket, I think it's this one, which actually, there's one of these that leads through to the inside of the suit. So, um, yeah, so you, you can, can want pass, to lead if you've got uh, a yeah, heated vest. Yeah, if you've got a heated vest or earphones or uh, if you want to charge something yeah. like a phone in a pocket. And certainly, here in the shop, I've sold a number of these where somebody was going to have a, um, a warm and safe base layer yep. underneath. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose one of the things about this suit is because in typical Klim fashion, it's a shell product, it doesn't come with any kind of thermal, um, you are going to need, if you're going to be riding in this in the winter, you do need to have a more than acceptable thermal solution. I understand why Klim have done this because, of course, in the summer, if you're going to be wearing your work clothes underneath it, the last thing you want is any kind of um, built-in th thermal solution. So I think it's the right way to go. But if you're wearing this in the winter, you're going to want a heated vest or something yeah. nice and comfy you just might and, need and, and cosseting. An extension lead, that's all I'd say to get, to get the lead yeah, out. Yeah, to get the lead out. Because, yeah, but it it's more than high. doable, yeah. Now, I know how I would use this if I had one of these suits, but what is that? This is designed... Uh, to lock the suit to your bike, they've got a special rucksack um, with the locking mechanism that goes around this, but you could use any old lock on it. It just depends, really, where you are. Yeah. If you're in central London, I wouldn't leave it on my bike, but if I was out in the sticks, it's, it's enough to, to sort of deter an yeah. opportunist. I, I was saying earlier how when I was, if I, if I was going to touring in France, um, I would take the suit off, I'd put it on the bike. In fact, what I'd do is I'd run a long wire up, up the sleeve into the jacket, I'd lock it to the bike. But actually that's perfect. You could put any kind of lock yeah. onto the bike 
that's just enough. If you're if you're out, out for lunch, then then no one's really gonna not gonna do that. Do that and and cut it off and steal uh, steal the suit. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought. Um, Sean, one of the other things we did have when these suits first came in, we had an issue. The leg lengths were huge. Um, even even the short leg was was pretty long. Is this, it right now that, is, that they've yeah, sorted Yeah, they've this? corrected that now. So I think the sample was vastly oversized. It was a long a long leg, um, but I think it was something like thirty six plus inches in leg. Um, we had quite a tall person here try it on and it was almost four inches too long for them and they were normally 34, 35 yeah. inch leg. This is a medium regular, I'm about 5, 10 roughly um, and that fits me absolutely spot on because you're going to lose two inches by the time you sit on the bike, it'll rise up. Yeah. Um, the armour is all adjustable, it's all on Velcro so even if you've got a long arm and your elbow sits in a different place you can move it, same yeah. with the shoulders. Same with the hips, same with the knees, and that also helps with packing. You can just strip the armour out, put it in a separate part of a pannier, and this folds down even smaller. Yeah, because the armour's in Velcro pockets, so, so it's yeah, very easy yeah, to, yeah. To, to take out. I don't think the legs was just the samples we, we had, Sean, because I remember those. Arms, but, everything. But, but it became an issue, and I'm sure that Klim, well, I know that Klim yeah. addressed it, so now this kind of works pretty well on, on most, most people. Um, any other details, Sean? Um, there's things like this. This is a Klim, Klim feature, a really nice an extra way of, of stopping rain coming in, in the neck, a little adjuster there. Yeah. You've got adjuster for the, for the waist. Um, I've already buttoned back the collar. They've got little hooks on the neck yeah. um, that connect there. Sorry, loops that connect to the hooks. And that just means, you know, in, in summer, you get more air into the jacket along with the, with the vents. Yeah. Great. So the million dollar question, I suppose, is, with all the technology that's at their disposal, having studied the Aerostitch suit that's been around for 30 years, has Klim been able to create a suit that's easier to live with, that's quicker to get in and out of? Because ultimately, that's what this suit is about. It's about convenience. It's got to do all kinds of other things, but you want a suit that you can get in to and out of very quickly. So, Sean, do you think they've succeeded? There's only one way to find out, really. What, you're challenging, you're challenging me, me, me to a race? Won't be a challenge. Okay. <laughs> Sean, Sean, by the way, is known um, as someone who can't do anything quickly. So this is going to be a breeze. It's going to be embarrassing because I'm going to kick his ass. Um, but anyway, um, Graham, are you ready? You got the stopwatch? Okay. Now, Sean, collar up first. You ready? One, two, three, go. I'm out. <laughs> I took my shoe off as well. I think I may stop and have a cup of tea in a minute whilst I wait, wait for Sean. Okay. I give up. Should do the buttons as well. I give up. It was a dodgy zip. It's a 30 year old zip. But anyway, you've got the impression these suits are pretty speedy to get in and out of um, when, when the zips work. They're a fantastic way of riding. They don't suit everyone. But if you're a commuter, someone like an airline pilot who needs to get into the airport and, get, uh, and have, have their uniform underneath, these are great bits of kit. They're not inexpensive. So on the price of this suit is what? Uh, this suit is 1365. Right. So if you compare it to a two-piece top of the range suit, it's pretty cheap. Yeah. But if you're comparing it to uh, something like a Havarsons, it's quite a lot more money. So yep. it, I think it sits somewhere in between the two. You lose a small part of the convenience of being able to wear the jacket by itself. But if if you're not the kind of rider that that does jeans and a uh, a jacket riding and you, you're commuting or you're doing A to B rides, I just think there's nothing better. Yeah. You do have to factor in, I suppose, um, some kind of thermo thermal solution. Um, so I one, think one most, I mean, even when it's really cold in, in some of the other jackets, you'll, you'll want something additional. Yep, so yep. Uh, you'll be wearing clothes underneath. I don't think that phases me in the at all. I've used right. this suit. Um, 
commuting to work for three years I used one piece suits yep. and I toured around Norway all over the place and they were just fabulous okay so that's it the Klim hard Hardanger um, it's a great bit of kit um, if you want to read more if you want to look more closely into the details it comes in two colors three different leg lengths visit the website motolegends.com if you'd like to receive our email bulletins about new products new products coming into the building every week and from here on in it is our um, aim to whenever there's a new product we'll make a, a quick video about it and, and post it up on the site so you can subscribe to our, our bulletins by going onto the front page of the website lots of little squares we call them tiles there's one there for email subscriptions nice and easy and quick to do if you prefer your information to be communicated via video graphically then we'd love you to become a subscriber to our video bulletins uh, you can do that on the button below anyway thank you for watching this uh, we hope you've enjoyed learning about the klim hardanger we will see you soon this is chris sean and that's sean bye bye